very good evening uh, to all our viewers. Welcome to this week's uh, edition of the agenda. My name is Taiwan Jabela, your host. Tonight on the show, we are very privileged uh, to have the king of Ondonga, Omkwanyirwa Tate Kuru uh, Philemon Shumbwa uh, Nangolo, a very kind and uh, humble leader who actually made time uh, to come uh, to our setup here in Ongwediva uh, at the trade fair where we are streaming the show from and uh, we are very very humbled to have him on the show. Tate Kuru, what a, a pleasure and privilege to have you on the show. Thank you very much for making time. Okay, thank you. Yeah, wonderful. If you can tell me just to start this conversation, the, the work, the functions, the responsibilities of someone in your position as a king, what is it that you do? Yeah, it's not uh, something that it's easy to be explained like that, but yeah, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it complies a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I can just be pointing some of the things that I can... Wonderful, that's fine. I can tell you. Yes, yes. So, you know, the first one is to read the, the people yeah, yeah. of your tribe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to make sure that all the traditional norms and all the spiritual from our ancestors, yeah. they are in line mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with your traditional. Wonderful. Yeah. So, so in this case, um, you know, you, you have a team, I suppose, you have a team of uh, advisors who brief you regularly, maybe every morning or every week. Or how, how does it work? How do you get to know that people are complying? So, in fact, it's not a team yeah. of advisors, but it's a team of senior headmen. Okay. So, those are the people that always come to advise the king when there is, or when it's needed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what does the king do? If you were to find that, um, you know, Mtele or Nipa or, or Naena or somewhere within the district of Ondonga, yeah. someone is not complying with... Uh, your expectations or, uh, with the traditions mm. of Ondonga. Yeah. How do you handle situations like no, that? No, no, no. The first time, it's not me to handle the situation. Okay. But the only first person to deal with it, it's a, let me say it's a, a junior headman. Okay. And then if they are starting to solve it, then he report it to the senior headman uh -huh. at the higher level village. Okay. So they tackle it. If they cannot, then they report it to the council of the, the king's council. Mm -hmm. So if the king's council, they cannot do it, then they come to the king at the Paris. Okay. I'm the only person who would take the right decision. Okay. Yeah. What kind of situations, I know that I'm putting you on the spot now here, but what, can, what, kind, what kind of examples would that be? Something that has been unable to be resolved at all those levels until it reaches the king. What, what kind of situation would that be? Yeah, yeah, but now, for now, I cannot remember, but uh, let me just figure out. Maybe there are some of, uh, there was an issue. Yeah. It, uh, it's, it's during a long time when, when I was not a king, it was for my uncle. Yes. So there was an issue of one senior headman was supposed to be installed at uh, a coca there, mm -hmm. and things did not go well. Yeah. So the headman, the senior headman there, they tried to solve the problem, but it was not uh, solved. Mm -hmm. From there, it comes to the king, and then he gave the last decision. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. No, it makes sense now. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that is a big thing yeah. <laughs> to, install a, yeah. to install someone there. Um, so then it means, you see, it's very exciting for me when I talk to you and, and I hear these things. As a matter of fact, I must tell my viewers, mm. it's the first time in my life that I'm speaking to a kid. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when I say I'm privileged, really, this is, this is what I mean. Yeah. Because in other kingdoms, mm. uh, maybe not very much in Africa, but especially uh, uh, Europe, the queen, the, the, you know, the person gets treated like uh, royalty, which is, which is okay because, of course, you are, you are a, a royal person. Mm -hmm. But in your case now, we, we know that you are a, you were a normal man. Mm -hmm. You had a job in government. You were mm -hmm. in the Namibian Defense Force, mm -hmm. and uh, we know you as soldiers. That you soldiers are always, you know, 
disciplined people, they get their hands dirty. How was the transition mm. from being a civil servant like that, a mm. soldier, to being now the Tatekuru now? No, you know, it was not something that I started now yeah. when I became the king. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's, I've been there in that appointment for 20 years. Uh -huh. I started uh, 2002 when I was appointed to by my uncles to be his deputy. Uh -huh. So the behavior started there. Okay. Yeah. So now, I mean, so you, 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 when before you became a king, you were, you know, a head of the house. Mm -hmm. You can plow with cattle in the field or with a, a tractor mm -hmm. or even take a hoe and, uh, you know, cultivate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you just quit those things? How does it No, work? no, no, no. Why should I quit? <laughs> Why should I quit? <laughs> no. You're a king now. Yes, yes. It doesn't mean that if you are a king, you cannot do the, the, the basic things. The, the basic things. No, you have to. Yeah. You know, if I can go back. I was told by my uncle that, uh, no, if, if you have people behind you, yeah. you cannot just tell them go and work. Yeah. Something that you does not know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. How are you going to inspect them? Exactly. So I have to do it. Even for your own children, I think it's important yes, for them to see. It's, a, it's, our, it's our traditional. Yeah. So if I stop doing it, so who's going to rent my kids? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was taught by my uncle how to milk the cow. And yeah. what if I did not teach my son? Mm. Who's going to teach him? Exactly. So I have. I have to do it. Wonderful. No, no, I understand that. Um, just... Uh, when you spoke about your work, mm. to say that you know you have representatives at different levels, yes, uh, and then big decisions then will be taken at your at your level. Yeah. Your work as a whole, how do you think it complements government? Because we have a central government, mm. and then their role ends somewhere, and yours as traditional leaders mm. start somewhere. Mm. How would you think? How would you describe? that, that complementary role to, to, to government work? Yeah, yeah, it, it has a lot. It has a lot to complement the mm. government because if I start with the Ministry of Urban and Rural Development, yeah. you see, we are there. Yes, because that's our ministry as a traditional leader. Yes, yes. And you go to the Ministry of Justice, mm -hmm. we are there as with a the traditional, traditional leader and, and in the Department of uh, Community Court. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. So the community court, it's where there is, even myself, mm. I'm, a I'm a judge. Mm -hmm. So we have a community court, Ondonga traditional community court, whereby people, they can come and register their cases, mm -hmm. and then we hear them, and we find all, it's something like that. Okay. So a lot of cases, we, let me say it like this here, we were having 250 cases in our Wow. Traditional office. That's a lot of cases. Yeah, it's a lot of cases. Uh, how? Do, which kind of cases do you deal with? In fact, uh, I mean, some people go. Okay, to it's a good question. <laughs> yeah, which, what people, kinds of uh, cases yes. that we deal with? Absolutely, it's a good cases. Good question, because you know, uh, community court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't deal with some other cases like uh, murders and other stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't prosecute those things. Okay. So we deal with a, uh, let me say, uh, okay, if people, they insult each other. Yeah, that's one of the cases that we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. So if people, they kill each other, but not prosecute more details on the murder. Yeah. We ask something that we call in Oshuambo, or it's a Eturopo Yombiri. Okay. Yeah, so Eturopo Yombiri. To unite. The, to unite people, you yeah. know, in, a, in our traditional. Yeah. If you kill somebody related to another family, yeah. so in traditional, some of the people, they will not be happy with you. They might do something that can also backfire in your family. Maybe a revenge or something. Yeah, it's, it's a, you can call it a revenge or you can call it something. It's, yeah. it's just like that. Traditionally, yeah. and you will see some people, they are dying from your family. <laughs> yeah. And that's what is mostly we are trying to protect by asking the family that killed somebody from this family. Yes to pay a certain amount of uh, money or yeah. cow uh -huh. yeah, to protect that one. Wonderful. And 
So that reminds me of the fines yes. that were published in the media. I know you are going to that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, okay. we, we did that and we, we saw there was a list of uh, things there and, and the particular amounts of money that has to be paid. Yes, 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 yes. Um, there was things like uh, ad ad adultery. Uh, yes, that one is one of the cases that can be dealt with in the community court. In the community court. Yes. Um, so, so when you say, for example, that there were more than 200 cases mm. already this year, mm. what, what were the common offenses there? Yeah, the common offenses are it's just about mm, stock theft. Yeah, yeah. Stock theft. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, most of the people there end issues of... Uh, insulting each other. Yeah, yeah. Those are mostly cases that we always get from the people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's also one thing on that list which is about mm. impregnating uh, yes. a small, a, a, a small a young girls. Young something? girls from the school. And yeah. For example, you. Yeah. You pregnant the lady from the school. Yeah. So the, the fine, it will not be like uh, I got somebody there, we talk, we agree each other, yeah. and then I pregnant her. Yeah. That fine, it will, not be, it will not be like the one for the student. Uh -huh. That one is different. It's more slightly higher yeah, yeah, yeah. than this one. This okay. one is just two kettle. Yeah. And yours, it will be four kettle or five kettle. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yeah. OK. Because one of the things that people do, the, 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 the existence of law, whether it's the customary law or mm. the, the formal one that uh, the formal courts adjudicate, is to help prevent future occur occurrences of these things, to say that if I do this, mm. this will be the punishment and therefore I must avoid doing that. Yes. Um, do you think the punishments within the traditional uh, courts mm -hmm. are strong enough to scare people from committing these kind of crimes. Of course. Because if, if uh, I mean, we see, for example, teachers, even teachers themselves, impregnating mm -hmm. um, their, their own learners, yeah. and it's not really going down, do you think you, you, must, you must increase the, the fines or find other ways to punish the, these people? The the, yeah, yeah, it, it's not a, let me just say, this is not a one-man show. Yeah. So, it's something that we traditional leader in the government, we have to tackle it, the two of us. Mm -hmm. Just like what we did. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. Here, when we see that with our fine, mm -hmm. so it was not going well. So then we bring in the government that, no, talk to your teachers. They are your employees. Yeah. Do something. Mm -hmm. And then when the government comes in, they said, okay, if you happen to do it, you lose the job. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's going well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Another controversial thing, Tatugurum uh, Kwanirwa, is the issue of, there's always this huge debate around mm. the issue of land. Mm. We see traditional leaders giving land mm. to politicians, to powerful people in their communities. Um, and then some people say, but no, the, the land doesn't belong to the king, or it doesn't belong, uh, then some others say no, but the land doesn't belong to the government. Mm. Who owns the land? Uh, in, in Ondonga, let's talk about Ondonga for a, for a minute. Yeah, <clears throat> in our area of jurisdiction, the lands belong to the king. Mm -hmm. And he gave the power to his custodians to divide it to people. Okay? Yeah. So, government cannot have a say in the affairs of land within the Ondonga jurisdiction. No, they, they will come. They can come in and ask land if they want it to yeah. put a project or something, but they still have to come to us. Uh -huh. We still have to give them the letter of consent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do we make sure that uh, the land is administered fairly? Because, of course, it belongs to, to my king. Mm. And you are my king. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm an Ondonga person born mm. and bred in Ondonga, mm. I have no other land. Yes. How do I make sure that uh, I do not become a victim of exclusion, that uh, my, king, my king is not just giving land to his relatives and, his, mm. and the ministers and the powerful people? Uh, how do you strike that balance? No, let's just uh, 
forget that word you said, uh, exclusive yeah. about getting lands. Yeah. Yeah. No, if I'm talking about Wondonga lands, it's, it's open, free and open for anybody. Mm. Even to our own people from Wondonga or outside of Wondonga. Mm. Mm. For example, if you can come and travel around Wondonga, you will not find only Wondonga people having lands there. Yeah, yeah. We have, so I can call it, it's a united, because every tribe we have it in Wondonga, and they have their lands. Mm, yeah. And we, we, we are not only allocating lands to the politician. In that word, politician, a person is a politician when he is there doing politics. Yeah. But when he came to us, yeah. Hey, we don't look at uh, who you are or where you came from yeah. or what post are you having in politics. No. Yeah. You are just a normal person. You are just a subject. You came to look for your lens. Yeah. Then we can give you if there is. Absolutely. Yeah. So in avoiding, you said what? Come again with that question. You said what? So how do you see that the land was given fairly? And what yes. Was? Yes. So the king does not give lands. In case of you said... Uh, yeah. He might be giving his family. No, I'm not the one who's giving lands. Uh -huh. It's belonged to me, but there is senior headman, junior headman. You go to the village. Yeah. I don't stay in the whole village in Ondonga. No, I stay where Paris is. Yeah, yeah. So you now, you go to Okashanja or you go to where, where all the village. Yeah. You look for your place, yeah. for your lands. Yeah. yeah. And then that headman, he can give you. Yeah, yeah. I will not even know that uh, you were there looking for rent. <laughs> Only if you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fair comment, uh, yeah. So now, and sorry, one yes, thing please, is that uh, yes. even if the person is related to me, yeah, he will just follow the the procedures which is there. Yeah, he will not come to me and say, no, my uncle or my brother, I need land where we. No. Yeah, yeah. He just have to follow the procedures going to the headman of that village where there is a land that he needs. Mm. And then he can take get it, it from there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, the other thing is um, there's a huge debate in South Africa yep. um, about, you know, uh, taking care of our traditional uh, leaders. Mm. In your case, mm. you, you were fully gainfully employed mm -hmm. when you lose when you leave your, your job to become a king mm -hmm. how do we make sure as a country mm -hmm. that we still take care of you that you still have an sufficient income to send your children to school and to do other things that the men any man must do uh, so in, in south africa they are debating about whether the traditional leaders are are paid adequately by government, mm -hmm. and in Namibia it seems like it's just a small uh, monthly allowance. Yes. Yes. Uh, so people are saying we don't want allowances; we want salaries because we are also doing work. Who for, is that people? Uh, some traditional leaders. So some traditional leaders. Okay. <laughs> Lucky enough, you did not hear me saying it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not you, mm -hmm. but I need your view on this. So, mm -hmm. do you think what you get, the allowance, is mm -hmm. really sufficient, or do you think that, how, how do you sustain yourself? How do I sustain myself? Yes. So, okay, no, it's, it's easy. Look, I remember 2007 when I was attending the Council of the Traditional in Swako. Yeah. So there was a question, it was brought up by, ah, some of them now they are dead. Yes. The Ruswanis and my uncles and other chiefs from the south. Yes. So they, they said they want to be paid salary. Yeah. And it was answered. No, now how we can pay? How can now we give a salary to our big people? You yeah. want to be employed by the government <laughs> and you will be having again boss on top of you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's how they answer it. And Tate Poamba, during that time, he was a president. Yeah. When he came on the podium to say something, he said, no. So you... So you are demanding the salary from the government, but yeah. so the king must be taking care of his people. Yeah. What are your people doing if you are asking a salary from us? Yeah, yeah. That's what he said. Yeah, yeah. And we, as a king of Ondonga, just starting from the first king. Yes. So in fact, we we are not even crying for for the salary from the government. Yeah. So our people, they know already their responsibility mm -hmm. to the kings. 
They oh. take they are I'm well taken care of by yeah. my people. Okay. Yeah. That I can say it. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, on that, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a very interesting thing that somehow your people, because at least what I know for sure is that mm. uh, once you ascend to the position of king mm. or chief in some areas, the the community, if you are a respected and you ascended to power in a in a in a in a good way, your community take take care of you. Yeah. But in what in what way? Do they bring money? Do they bring cattle and then the, the palace sells the, the cattle and then put money in your account? No. Because, because there has to be money there. Uh, mm. you, you, you have a household to take care of. You have a family mm. to take care of. No, if I start to explain you how do they take care of me, I will not finish because it's a long process. Yeah, okay. it's, a, it's something that I need maybe time to explain it to you. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, just just understand yeah, yeah. that uh, I'm well taken care of by my people. <laughs> okay. If you want to come and see, just come to the new Paris. It yeah. takes only two years to bring it, but it's big. Yeah, come and see. Yeah, no, no. I'll, I'll and then you you will just get yourself the ideas that ah no, it might be it's what he's saying. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> we we go for uh, a quick break and then return for the second part of the show with the King of Wandonga, Tatakuru, uh, Nangolo. NMH at one brings you news from all across Namibia. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact NMH1 at synergy.com.na. NMH at one, your lunchtime news companion. The Regional Review brings you news, views and interviews from NMH correspondents from across the country. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact regional at synergy.com.na. Sunset News is a daily news show focusing on national headlines as well as international news. If you'd like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, please contact sunset at synergy.com.na. Sunset News. Don't end your day without us. We continue our very exciting uh, conversation with uh, Tatekuru Omkwanirwa Nangolo. Now, the one thing also, Tatekuru, that is very much uh, in public d debate and in the newspapers, in the media, is the issue of the red, uh, the red line. Mm -hmm. And the red line uh, actually borders on Donga. Yes. What are your thoughts of, 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 uh, on that? Should it remain in place, should be uh, removed? How does it affect your people? You know, there is two things that might be a government have to do about that one. Yeah. So sometimes we, 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 are, we, are, we are confused. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me just give you an example. For example, the minister come to visit here. If he came to the Paris, 
obvious we have to slaughter goat and cattle yeah. to give him something to eat. But they eat. Yeah. They eat. But what is the meaning of the red line? They said our cattle, they are a bit having disease. <laughs> yeah. But they're eating it. But they're eating it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't help anything to, to have a red line. And when you are here, you are consuming this meat. And when you are there, you are saying that meat, it's not uh, it's contaminated. <laughs> yeah, it's contaminated. <laughs> that does not help anything. It's one strong reason that uh, one have to look at it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, the red line, it was not only bothered with us. Yeah. It was also at uh, Ochituo, so Gamas, yeah. and those ones, they are no more there. Mm -hmm. But I can remember at Ogama, it's still there. But if you want to travel with your cattle wherever in Namibia, it, from Gama, mm. you just put them in quarantine for 24 days. Mm -hmm. Then after that one, the doctor examine if there is nothing then, you are free to go. You get the permit and take them wherever you want to take them. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying there is two things to do. Either they remove the, the quarantine or maybe they bring the quarantine for us to quarantine our cattle in 24 days in the quarantine. Then we can take them wherever we want to take them. Mm -hmm. It's a very pity to see other farm that side, inside of the rain light, they are benefiting. And here, we have the same cattle. Yeah. Yeah, so same brand. We are qualified farmers, just like those ones, but others, that's why they are benefiting. Here, we are struggling to sell our cattle because there's no market. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so at least. That's my ideas. Maybe they can bring a quarantine or they can remove the red line. Yeah, yeah. And they just put procedures. Absolutely. Yeah. Is it something that... Um, is it ideas that just that you just have in your mind, or have you actually discussed at some platforms with leaders of government and say, these are the two alternatives that we can follow? So we did not get that opportunity to 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 discuss it with the higher level of the government. But I think that opportunity will come when it comes. We have to do the same. We have to discuss. We have to tell them mm -hmm. how, how do we feel about that thing. Absolutely. Yeah. The, <clears throat> The, I know that uh, Andonga mm. are very strong farming community. Yes. They pride themselves with cattle farming. Yes. But gone are the days when when having cattle was just a, a symbol of, of wealth. Now yeah, you want yeah. to actually make actual wealth from your animals. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So how are the people in your district uh, affected by, by the red line? And, and not also having the access to big European markets and stuff like that. Mm, yeah, yeah. They, they are affected because, you know, here you can have uh, 600 or 500 head of the cattle. And imagine those 500, how many calf are they going to give you in a year? Mm -hmm. It's more than maybe 400 and something, and you have no way to sell them. Mm -hmm. The high fast, the tourists. Only mm -hmm. when a Aussie grow up to five years or seven years, it's when you are be able to, to sell it at the open market. Yeah, yeah. Where there is this woman uh, selling meats to the roca. Absolutely. So, so it's, uh, it's very affecting and, and, and yeah, sometimes now uh, the, the shops, the spas, the choppies, the shop rides, so you know they were not taking meat from here. Yeah. They were in the same understanding that uh, this meat is uh, not healthy for them to sell it. Mm. But now what I can see, they are now giving tenders to our local people to get the meat just from the village. Yeah. What they now asking for you to do when you are supplying meat to them, so you must have a proper okato meno. Yes. That okato meno, it must be proper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they always come and inspect it. So now a bit of a market to our people, it's coming. Mm, 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 mm. So, and what we need also, maybe the government can tell all the franchise shops when they are coming here that when you are there, you don't need to come and order meat from Mitko here inside the red line. No, mm. just buy there, mm. like what they are doing now. So we just need the motivation from the government so that our people also, they can enjoy the fruit of na freedom <laughs> Namibia. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So <clears throat> if, if, the, if the veterinary cordon fence was to be removed, mm. one of the options, one of the proposed ideas mm. is to move it all the way to the Angolan border so mm. that uh, because it looks as if 
uh, these animal diseases get uh, imported from Angola and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Is that is that one of if you were to say that uh, this cordon fence must be removed? Is it now the idea? Is it, I mean, do you agree that it must be moved to Angola, or do we say no. just just remove it? No, I'm not supporting the ideas of removing the cordon fence to go to Angola. Yeah, that one is a bit challenge. Yeah. So you know, if you put it there to last only for one day, those people they will cut it off. Mm -hmm. There was a, a, a what a, a fence there during South African mm -hmm. time. That's true. Yeah. Okay, that one it was cut by all our people when they were liberating the country and some other people also. Yeah. Because you know Namibia and Angora, we are exchanging people. Mm. One is staying in Angora, but his family is in Namibia. One is married here, but the family of the wife that you marry, it stays in Angora. Mm. So now, how possible the government can control this? Yeah. So then, so, so in that case, then it means that uh, I, I do not support that one. What I support, yeah. it's the idea that was brought up last year, just to extend, yeah, to extend. Uh, it's only that uh, I didn't know that you will come ask me about this one. I could have brought the information that I yeah. got from the people who came to to brief us about the extension of the red line. Yeah, yeah. So like that, or Oshivero, they extend it from. The current Ojivero now we mm -hmm. have up to Tate Dringa's house there, and it goes like that. Mm -hmm. The same at Kavangos, there is extension also. The same at Omtambo Womawe, there is extension. It's only that I cannot mention exactly where did, yeah. did they start. Yeah. But there is something like that. I'm supporting that one. Okay. Yeah. No, wonderful, wonderful. <coughs> um, let's talk about um, the... Uh, the economic, uh, we, we spoke now about um, animal farming as one of the key mm. sources of income for, for your people. Mm. What are the other business and investment opportunities in within Ondonga itself? What is it that one can come and do there and, and actually survive economically? So we have already spoke about agriculture, ne? but we've uh, just been pointing the farming of cattle. Yes, yes. So we can talk about crop. Yeah, yeah. So we can talk about tourism. We have a rich history huh. when it comes up to Andonga people. Yeah. We yeah. have a rich history. Yeah. So people, they can come and hear the stories and see the old places where our forefathers were staying. So we have a lot of things like Nakambares and we have on Norongo, we have the desert that side, the yeah. salt pans, and all any other places. There mm. are lots. Mm. If it mm. comes up to the histories of our people, yeah, yeah. I'm asking that, Mkwaniro, uh, because there was uh, there's always debates in the central and southern parts of the country. Mm -hmm. I remember some years ago, um, uh, the, the leader of the Landless People's Movement, Mr. Swarboy, saying, yeah, uh, there was this nothing in the north. Mm -hmm. this, this nothing that, uh, that the north offers mm -hmm. economically to this country. Mm -hmm. um, what is your take on that? I mean, so, you, so you, you are from... <laughs> come again with that question. <laughs> he, said, he said what? He said there's nothing happening no, south of the, north of, the, of this fence. Mm -hmm. they, here there's nothing, it's just people exploiting each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, now I can't remember his exact words, word, word by word, but broadly he was saying there's nothing happening this side that can contribute to the economy of the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's, I don't want to go in politics, but uh, the way I, the, how am I going to answer that question? Might be that Swart boy. Yes. He wasn't been before here. Yeah. He doesn't know the place well. So maybe we must just invite him to come in. And <laughs> experience. Check. Yeah, and experience what is <laughs> going on here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, very good, very good. Um, you, you briefly touched on the issue of um, stock theft. Mm. That is actually sort of the majority mm. of cases that, that are in, in your courts, in traditional courts here. Mm. What is causing this? And uh, is it a thriving industry? Mm. Or is it because... And, and what is actually being done to sort of 
uh, contain this uh, this problem. Mm, what is causing people to steal cattle? Yes, I mean uh, because su suddenly now it is it is like an industry on its own that people yes, yes, steal yes, 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 and yes, they are yes. thriving. They are making progress in there. I mean, <coughs> it's a growing industry of just stealing. Yeah, first of all, uh, yeah, stock theft is not just only here at the north. It's all over Namibia. Wherever you go, you hear stock theft. That's true. Yeah, but here, according to my point of view, why people they are stealing the cattle? Yeah, it's just because now the place is gone higher. The, the prices of, of cattle. Yeah, of the head of the cattle, it's mm. gone higher. You, it's now like a diamond. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's you find the Aussie. It's costing twenty four thousand or fifteen thousand. Mm. So imagine a young boy to get just one and get 15,000 in the pocket. Just you like think that. he will stop? <laughs> he will not stop. He will not it's stop. just because of price. Yeah. Because when cattle they were costing 600 those years, ah, there was no thief. Yeah, yeah. There was no thief. But nowadays, it's needed everywhere. And so that's why you see now stock theft, it's, it's increasing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is it now in your, tradi in your traditional fines? Mm. Um, do you think that because this problem continues to grow, mm. that maybe you must revise some of your some of your punitive measures so that you really try to deter people from going ahead, uh, going on and on with stealing? Mm. Uh, what, what what are the solutions? What are we going to do? No, look. So maybe there is something that I did not explain to you well yeah, yeah. when it comes up to the stock theft cases. Yeah. Yeah. There is a. Okay, let me somebody just stood up in his house and go steal your cattle yeah. while they were grazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one, it's a, it's a police case. It's a stock theft case. Uh -huh. So that person must be just be arrested. You must just go and report your case, open the case at the police station, and yeah. the police station, they can come in and arrest that person. Yeah. They took him to the magistrate, and magistrate do his work. I understand one head of cattle is 12 years. In yeah, the yeah, yeah, so in the courts, yes. That's belong to them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have cattle, so when I'm having cattle, so I'm a busy man. Let me say I'm working at uh, Oranjimund, and you are here, always here at house. Mm. So I said, okay, these six of cattle that are in my household, so I must just give them to you so that you can take care of them with yeah. yours. Yeah. So okay, so you accept and you stay with them. Mm. When I come back asking you, so how, how is my cattle there? How are they multiplying? Mm. You said, I no, there is nothing. <laughs> so that's now a traditional yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh -huh. he can come to the traditional office, he registers his cases in the community court yeah. secretary, and then you'll be just summoned like uh, the way people they used to be summoned by the magistrate office. Yeah, yeah. The messenger of court, uh, he will just bring the summon, yeah. and you sign. He will bring back the return of service from you to the secretary of the community court, mm. and he will put it in line, uh -huh. that case. Uh -huh. So for that now, so in our, I'm just talking about Ondonga. Yes. So in our rules, traditional rules, yeah. so if you steal one cattle, then you have to pay two. Oh, I see. So one that you steal and the another one, a uh -huh. complementary. Oh, I see. So now they have to fine you. If it's money, uh, traditionally, if you are paying money, it's 1,500 for one kettle. That's a kettle. Mm, 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 mm. So it's up to you to see how many kettle that you <laughs> you, <Okay. laughs> you steal or you misuse. Yeah, yeah. And you time use it with 1,500. Yeah. And yeah. you get your <laughs> <laughs> total yeah. amount to pay to, to your colleague. Yeah. <laughs> so And if you want to pay the last kettle, then you can pay. It's up to you. It's also accepted also. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Before we go for our last break, uh, the uh, traditionally or historically rather, mm. uh, but way way back in history, mm. there used to be a lot of conflict between Obamba tribes, mm. uh, even wa warriors mm -hmm. clashing, mm -hmm. uh, fighting I suppose over territories and stuff like that. Mm. How would you describe unity within the current traditional authorities of our Mo people? Of our Mo people, yes, yeah, it's a, that's a good question. Also, it's mm. so yeah. You said there was something like people they were fighting the tribes. Yes. So yeah, it was like that. Those years, like if I can say, during 
kambonde kampinga na nekare jampinga na shipanga yeah. shamtenyas those are the kings that were receiving the pressures from other tribes and they mm. have to fight to free their odongas yeah, yeah. so there was no peace among the nations here mm. in the north because mm. everybody want to conga and extend his empire yes yeah his lands and what what and some they went to fight because they want to conga keto yeah, yeah. we call it a kumbu yeah in our language <laughs> yeah so they zagutu tai akarwe kumbu he's going to to fight and get cattle confiscate uh, yeah, yeah and get cattle and bring them here so that he can have a lot of head of cattle yeah but compared to nowadays yeah compared to nowadays i'm telling you so the the unity that we are having now is all the tribes here at the north mm -hmm. it's so it's a very good one Okay. One cannot even explain it to you. Okay. Because if I can go back to my history, the king from Ondonga, he was not allowed to go to Mkwambi, mm. Mkwanyama, Unganjera. In our language, we said, I know, Unkwanirwa, Ihajatifo. So we were not allowed to do that. Okay. Going to our people themselves, they were not allowed to marry. In other tribes. Another tribes like. Uh, mm -hmm. Akwambi Nganjeras, what, what, what. Yeah. So, but there was an agreement between Andonga and Akwanyama. Yeah. So the king from, Ukwa, from Andonga, he can marry a lady from Akwanyama. Uh -huh. That was allowed. Okay. Yeah. So, but from other tribes, uh -uh, I, I did not hear about that one. But now, yeah. so everything is okay. You <laughs> can go and marry wherever, wh whoever you want to yeah. marry. And there's no more restriction. Yeah. So we are accepting each other. So we, as a kings, we are visiting each other. Yeah. There's no more that uh, thing of uh, saying Ungwaniri yeah, Ajatifo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Even at Ukwambi, Ongangeras, wherever I want to go, I'm free. And yeah. it's, and I think it's also accepted by my ancestors yeah, yeah. because mostly people what they were fearing it's a, it's our ancestors because it's if some, something it's prohibited for you not to do it in yeah. your tribe it's a taboo yeah yeah and if you do it what ha what is going to happen you'll be punished by that yes 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 <laughs> yes 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 but now i think they <laughs> accepted it and we are now free to travel free to marry each other free yeah. to do and, and even the government yeah. it's it's also contributing a lot because they set up they established a, a, a council of the traditional leaders whereby all the gazetted kings mm -hmm. 56 if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. they are always having council like this year we are going to have it at enana okay all the chiefs kings they are coming to enana and we discuss our things related to our mandate yeah mandate under one roof yes wonderful so we are no we we go for the last break and then return for a short wrap up on the show We Talk brings you community news that lies at the heart of Vindic residents. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact wetalk at synergy.com.na. You live, we talk. Sunset News is a daily news show focusing on national headlines as well as international news. If you'd like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, please contact sunset at synergy.com.na. Sunset News. Don't end your day without us. The Regional Review brings you news, views, and interviews from NMH correspondents from across the country. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact regional at synergy.com.na.
Animate at One brings you news from all across Namibia. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact Animate One at synergy.com.na. Animate at One, your lunchtime news companion. We continue now with the last part of the show with Sam Kwanilwa at the Grunangolo. Um, now, the, uh, when, you, when you are presiding over a, a large tribe mm -hmm. like Andonga, mm -hmm. you also have people of different beliefs, whether, yeah. whether it's religious oh, or yes. uh, but politically in particular. Um, and politicians yes they caught you a lot every politician in this country want to be in the good books mm. of the king of wandonga yes uh, how do you make sure that you don't get used for political reasons by you, you, you people don't use you for politics no there is two things that protecting me about that one yeah the first thing you mentioned it i was a soldier yeah i was a senior office in the namibian air force yeah so with that one, huh? there is rules and regulation of the military people. You retired all inside the service. Yeah. So you don't go in politic things. Mm -hmm. So I'm still not involving in politics things. Yeah. Yeah. And when you are a king like me, you are not wearing colors. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I don't put on SWAPO, I don't put on LDP, I don't put on PDM colors no because everybody belongs to me yeah, yeah it's up to me to see how am i going to handle them yeah yeah, yeah. so if he comes to me and he tell me to support him so i know already what to say to him yeah so if he want to use me i'm just a normal person like you it doesn't mean that if you are a king you don't think you don't reason things <laughs> so I, I i have my ways of reasoning things i will just know that this one wants to use me this yeah, one yeah. wants to tell me the truth yeah, yeah. so they are my people. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good, uh, yeah. it's a good strategy. It's yeah. a good, <coughs> it's a good position to have yeah. uh, because obviously we know everybody will come to the palace and bring all sorts of gifts and all these things. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that you have your own way of dealing with this kind of. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, as we wrap up this interview, um. Kwanilwa, um what is the legacy that you want to leave behind when you are no longer king one day? Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you are in the big shoes mm -hmm. of the greatest kings of Ondonga, mm -hmm. the historical kings of Ondonga. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you spoke about the, the Kambondes, and mm -hmm. those, are, those are greatest warriors. Of yes, course. yes, 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 yes. How do you make sure that their legacy, that you sustain that mm -hmm. legacy? <coughs> no, it's good. It's good that you mentioned something. You said, uh, I'm in the big shoes of those big people. Mm. So my friend, up to now, I did not even start to take care of my own legacy. Yeah. So I'm just busy with what was left by my uncle. It's the first thing that I need to take care of. Mm -hmm. So you see, I erected the memorial slings at uh, Namtuni. Yes. That was not my idea. Yeah. It's my uncle. He told me that I wanted to see that thing before I die. Mm -hmm and unlucky, so we did not do it. So a lot of things that he had to, he have said and mm -hmm. a lot of things that he was saying he was left with by his brother, yeah, yeah. my namesake, Philemon Shungwa, yes. that he wanted to do. Those are the things that I'm trying to, to finish. Mm -hmm. And if I die without uh, touching on my own legacy, no, that's, it's not my responsibility. Those who are going to take over from me, they must see what they are going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm busy with what my uncle left on the table. Yeah. Busy with his legacy to make things happen just like the way he wanted to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Kwanilwa, uh, thank you very much, really. I don't know how to thank you because you, you really, uh, I'm humbled the fact that, because uh, a lot of people are saying, oh, you should have gone to the palace. I don't know whether I even qualified to come to the palace. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I thought in my small space here at least, yeah. but you, you were humble enough to come to a small place like this yeah. and have this conversation with me. So I thank you very much and I just wish you the best in your, in your, in your, in your work. Oh, no, thank you. 
Thank yeah. you very much. You know, one thing that you need to remember, the king is for people. Yeah. It's not for himself. Yeah, yeah. And it's not for his place. Yeah. Wherever you are invited to go as a king, you have to go. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, yeah, like those years when they said, uh, if you need a king, you don't look at the king, you mm -hmm. don't do what. Yeah. No, those things are no more there. Yeah. So you are free to invite me, you are free to come and visit me. Yeah. So Wonderful. feel free. Okay, thank, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> That was uh, Tatekulu Omkanyirwa Nangolo of Ondonga, you know, speaking to us uh, about his work and uh, everything. So we're coming uh, to you from the Ongwendiva Annual Trade Fair here in the north. And uh, yeah, that was the show for tonight. Good, good night.